A few years back we had a, um, a, a group I'm in, we had a winter scene and on the winter scene we had a lake with people skiing on the lake and as you can see we've got a circuit going around the outside there we have another circuit coming around there and we have this one in the middle now each of them have got magnets this one actually had two but one has come off that one's there has got about three i think or two also got two on it and that one there has got uh, one two three four five about six or something on it but when you apply the power now the belts will probably uh, fall off the pulleys here um, because we haven't got a surface to hold it all down but you see that's what happens and your skiers have magnets attached to them and they follow around skiers, skaters, sorry skaters now all this equipment is out of old photocopiers so I intend using the outside belt of this one and its motor uh, to power the boats going up and down the canal it worked successfully on the um, display layout that we had it is now obsolete so I'm going to as I say I'm going to use that um, uh, outside belt yeah, underneath it that's the motors I believe they come out of photocopiers as do all the belting and the pulleys everything I believe are out of old um, photocopiers so if you know someone who's got a, a business at pulling to pulling apart old photocopiers or whatever have a word with them you might be able to get some of this mechanism and do the same so uh, before I cut this out I'm actually going to make the base for the canal and set up one of those belts get that working then I will look at cutting out that hole as far as I'm concerned no use cutting the hole out mind you I could just put the canal in there and just have it a static one if it doesn't work but it will work I'm being positive okie dory now I have this bit of wood cut out we've seen I've drilled I've actually drilled four holes in it one for a pulley there, one for the drive pulley there, a small one for the anchoring screw to anchor the motor in, and then I did drill another one there because I was going to put another one of these little wheels here, out here, and put a longer belt on um, this belt here. It just makes it's just a tad longer, but it hasn't got the magnets glued to it. However, we got a bit of MDF, 12 mil and that lines up along there like that another piece for the other side and I just hope these actually line up on the, the layer but never mind then we've got our, our lake top I beg your pardon, our canal top which uh, just sits on there and then we have our little boats and I've gone and lost what I had for a boat ah, here we go we use this little wee wheel we use that for a boat but um, we've got to put a magnet oh, tiny it's a tiny wee magnet drop that in the hole there and it'll catch there we are it's caught a there and then we just give it a little bit of power a bit more a bit more I have to get it slowed down resisted down so it's going a bit slow but that's what it'll be looking like first specs will be painted blue and uh, because this belt here that I'm using is cut you'll see that it gives a kick as it goes around the boom just there but I can live with that and this one's already got uh, what one two three four magnets already glued on it
few magnets. Righty ho, now this is the uh, the canal. This is the um, probably about the uh, well, this is the second one I built. First one I ended up drawing too many holes and it looked like um, Swiss cheese. However, we will turn the power on and see what happens. Now I've got to um, wait now until I get the little boats. My little big bits of balsa are doing the job at the moment. Um, the original motor I was going to use was far too fast, unable to slow it down. So, oops, oops slip my hand out from the harness. I got um, a different motor, and if I can bring a torch up, throw the light on the subject. It's a smaller motor, it goes through a, a different type of gearbox onto a large drive wheel. And then down on there, you can see the belt going around. Quite clever. And you get the little boats coming along. So like I say, I just have to wait until the boats arrive. It's on its way from Germany. So it should be here in about 10 days. They do a wee bit of a kick as they go around the the wheel here, but I think it's there's a join of the um, the belt beside that one. Bit of a drunk sailor, if you ask me. Uh, that could also be one of the magnets underneath could be reversed round, could be the wrong way around. I never realised uh, magnets had a positive and negative side until I. Uh, glued them on underneath there and then when I turned the, the motor on as the magnet underneath came along the little boat sort of disappeared across the room in a great hurry see that other one going good as gold so I'm just picking that one of the magnets under this little beast is round the wrong way one thing I'll have to check out for when I put the magnets on the, uh, the boats Right, oh, now I've drilled some holes um, here, here, there, there, and a couple through there, just um, just as a guide as to where I want the canal to go. So now I've got to cut a hole into the plaster. I will most likely have to um, make this larger. I should actually have taken the buses off because I don't want them to come around if they did take off accidentally. I don't want them to pick up all this plaster that's over here. Keep cutting that out. Like that. I hope by heck there's no block under there, but it would be embarrassing if there is. Master's flicked up onto the rowing lines as it always does. You know, it goes where you don't want it to go. Matter of fact, I might just like uh, get my Christmas turkey ready and not pulling all the innards out. And this is one of the reasons I use paper and that because if you ever got to go in there and do some uh, work on it, if you have mesh in there, it can be a, a bit of a problem. And likewise with the plaster bandages. See I have pulled that up but that will all glue back down. That there. Right. And one little uh, problem. As he grabs a pair of side cutters I've got a staple in there. I'm going to try and find that staple. Dig it out. I presume it's a staple. Get in there. There that's it. That's out. That's a little tuck back. I'll probably have to take a, uh, a little bit more off there. There's another staple there. Oh, well, half it. That's it. I'll get this Electrolux out and, uh, and um, re uh, put that all another vacuum. More staples. 
vacuum it is once I vacuum that up I'll just throw a bit of PVA in there and, and re-stick that down. So that's basically the where the canal's gonna go in there. I probably will pull more paper out of there because it's just annoying me that I can still see it. Mind you, if I stick a, a decent piece of cardboard up in under that, underneath there, it will um, hold all that up. You know, make a side for a for the tunnel for the canal. So, right, I'm time to clean that mess up now and uh, start cutting. Right now, I've used the saw here. Now I've started cutting in there cut into there but I've got to stop now because I've got to come back to about here somewhere either side a couple of road wires I have electrical wires underneath for the turnouts so I have just got to um, get in and cut those off now right there'll be a bit of noise but never mind here we go find the wire Right. Now I've got to do some digging. And pull that wire out. And this mic wire's over here. Look at that. Done. Right. that done got wires coming through here so now I've got to shift them right you know, as you can see I have knocked a bit more off the hill there but that's all right I'll get back in and fix that I've got it all cut out to here I've got to cut across there yet and now a little bit of forward thinking in the future Donald I've got to remove all these tracks so I can continue cutting across to here and there'll be a bridge and put in there so uh, I'm gonna have to unscrew it. that's why one of the reasons why I use the little screws unscrew it and it comes out easy as anything you're not having to go in with pliers or trying to pull the track the uh, the tacks out and damaging the track now I may have to go in underneath and just cut that up in there a wee bit more Oh, but there we are. It's all out. Uh, get the sandpaper and uh, give all that a bit of a, a clean up. And then theoretically, my uh, river surface will come in up under here somehow, in which it's not cooperating properly at the moment. I've got wires in the way under there that uh, it will sit up under there like that and I'll have my little boats going up and down there yes I'm going to need to cut that Hang on, where are we with there I'm going, yeah I'm going to need to take about another inch or 25 mil off there I actually went and bought the perspex and I went into the place and I said I need it six inches by 20 and 25 inches and they looked at me and said metric boy metric <sighs> i had no idea sorry rightio i've uh, got that all um, whistled out so to speak 
uh, bit of 3mm MDF which I have uh, cut to shape, well, roughly to shape recess this by 3mm and that fits in there, nice smooth surface well it will be once I sand off, there's a bit of a bump there but I just think it might be the edge, I'll sand that off a few spots of glue and sit on there and there's the bridge uh, rough but yeah and I've got to do something with this here I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with that I'm not 100% sure where that track goes it comes around there so I might have to uh, take a cut right out to the edge here and then just put a, another bit of MDF in there or cut another piece a bit bigger never mind we're getting out righty ho I've got that done just got a sanding under there to make it look a bit more respectable can't get in onto there because of the legs in the way that was the original piece of wood I had there MDF but I decided to dig it out and I cut a larger piece it doesn't fit perfectly but that doesn't matter you can have tracks going over there and any gaps that are seen will be filled with ballast so what I'm going to do is glue that in and slap a bit of paint on it and then later on I'll relay the track and then the road bridge that's the next one okay she's been there for about 24 hours the clamps on it I'll take them off easier said than done like that. yep the glue's taken hold beautifully so now what I've got to do is I've got to file there file the hell out of it there and there and um, and then groove I just hope the buses don't belly on that bit there but time will tell well as you can see here the hump bridge or the hump bridge was too much of a hump so I've had to take it out and um, whoops make it a wee bit of a a flatter bridge <sighs> so disappointed but when you look at it there it is a lot a lot more lower it's actually going to fit in a wee bit better I've closed up there was a heck of a gap here so I've just got to realign the grooves and but that'll be after the PVA is dried yeah shame then I'll get in I'll build a, a tunnel mouth for here for the canal at the back I've got to take that out in there a bit more a bit more of that's got to be removed and then I can re scenic that uh, where all that uh, plaster's come off Dread. okay so I got impatient and I put four little screws just to hold it down and we'll try it out yes that one works that way try it t'other way yep that's better all I got to do now is uh, when the glue is all dried I've just got to sand it all smooth it either and remove the screws and sand it at both ends I'll run a bit of PVA over those wires just to anchor them in Now that wall over there is uh, going to be the bridge and uh, two little blocks of MDF are actually going to be the embankments which will have bricky brick wall along them and it's just making sure that everything fits under the bridge doesn't quite look right when it goes around the corner but um, I'm not worried about that
coming all right. who helped.